How's it, how's it, how's it, cause it's time to Valaau with me, Mr. Valaau Dicky Chang. Join us as we meet your uncles, your aunties, your brothers, your sisters, your brothers, sisters, uncles, cousins, neighbors, grandmother, all the ohana. We'll take you to breathtaking places you've never been, meet famous people you've never seen, kick back and cruise, you know the rules. Aloha kawaii, mahalo nui and thank you for joining us this week in yet another exciting and informative episode of Valaau, I'm Dickie Chang. Today we're going to be telling you about our phone book recycling program. It's that time of the year to recycle our phone books. We'll have an opportunity to speak to the coordinator, Denise Tripoli, and with the County of Kauai, Allison Fraley. We'll also have an opportunity to introduce you to the Baseball Hall of Fame world, none other than the legendary Mr. Tommy Lasorda. Now, Tommy Lasorda's visit here on the Garden Island of Kauai was put together partly by our very dear friends, from Leadership Koi. What is Leadership Koi, you ask? Well, let's check out the first ever graduating class of 2007, the teens of Leadership Koi. Our vision at Leadership Koi is to inspire future leaders, and we've done so over the past year in a few different ways. We've enlisted 17 youth from across the island. We've got representatives from Kapa'a High School, Waimea High School, Koi High, and Island School. <clears throat> Once a month, they've met and we've met to develop our leadership skills, our values. We've met to discuss community issues surrounding Kauai's community. We've met to undergo and plan and implement community projects. We've been able to hear from many inspirational speakers from our local community and from abroad. And we've also touched upon our Hawaiian culture, which is inherent to Kauai. So tonight, They'll be talking to you about their overview of the year in Leadership Kauai. And um, sit back and enjoy as they unfold and share what their experience has been like. In Leadership Kauai, we learned five practices of leadership. And the first is model the way. The most important quality people look for and admire in a leader is credibility. Credibility means when someone says something to you, you believe them. Good leaders know that it's their behavior that earns them respect. It's what they do, not what they say, that creates trust in their leadership. The second practice of leadership is to inspire a vision. Leaders understand what people want and can explain it in a way that gets people excited about the future. They paint a clear picture about what could be possible, that others are inspired to follow them there, because it is not just the leader's idea, but it's also everyone else's thoughts and ideas too. Most of the time, people want to feel some sense of ownership of what they're doing, and that's the part that inspires. The third leadership practice is challenge by process. The work of leaders is change. They challenge the process by searching for opportunities, by experimenting, taking risks, and learning from mistakes. Extraordinary things don't get done in a huge leap. They get done one step at a time. Great leaders demonstrate the courage to continue the quest despite opposition and setbacks. The fourth leadership practice is enable others to act. Leaders know they can't do it alone. It takes a team. They understand the heart of cooperation is trust. Leaders promote a sense of we're all in this together. They know they must strengthen others by sharing power, providing choice, and making each person feel competent and confident. And we end with the fifth leadership practice, encourage the heart. Leaders set high standards and high expectations of their team. They are quick to recognize the contributions and celebrate the achievements and victories of others. They maintain a positive outlook, pay attention, and often encourage. Caring is the heart of great leadership, and great leaders can genuinely communicate it. During the first weekend in August, Pi'ina Hoku met for a retreat at Camp Slogan. 
Foggett in Coquet. We participated in activities that fostered bonding and learning about each other. Our first challenge together was a five mile hike on the Pihea Trail with historian and Coquet wildlife expert, David Boynton. Mr. Boynton introduced us to the endemic species quarantine and shared historical accounts of the area. We will miss him and want to recognize the many contributions he has given our community. After the hike, we debriefed the challenges we faced. I never knew walking together in a group was so hard to do. After Amma's wheelchair broke down, we needed to make a difficult group decision of whether to stop or complete the group's goal. We decided to complete our goal and Amma waited for us at the lookout. We learned that sometimes, in order to accomplish the set of goals, concessions need to be made. That evening, we participated in a Hawaiian value sport building activity that was interactive and fun. After completing our project, we presented our value and philosophy behind our construction. The Matrix was a challenging event that required communication, trust, and memorization to complete the activity. We also had a chance to hear about the many issues surrounding our community and talk about which topics were important to our group. As a team, we decided on a park beautification project. Kuleana's responsibility. At our weekend retreat in Koke'e, we spoke about the many issues facing Kauai. As, our future, as future leaders, we will be challenged with many growing issues facing our island home. Understanding that is everyone's responsibility and taking action is important in preserving our island's lifestyle on Kauai. In September, we met at the Kauai Beach Resort. Our guest speaker that morning was Reading Lab Coordinator from KCC, Kimo Perry. He led a group discussion on cultural diversity, positive and negative cultural stereotypes, and living in a multicultural society. Mr. Bill Cathers from the Aspen Institute spoke to us about different leadership styles, strategies, and leadership philosophies. He used examples from Martin Luther King Jr.'s Letters from Birmingham City Jail and Sophocles Antigone. Kualika is to manage diversity, and Makawe is to always be open to new perspective and new ways of learning. Every leader faces challenges in reaching their goals. Being able to manage differences and conflicts are very important in succeeding. It is equally important to be very open to new ideas and ways of thinking in order to grow and then become an effective leader. In October, our group met at the Just Live program to exercise team building. Besides having fun, we learned how to work together towards a common goal. At lunch, we heard from Analia Atkins, who spoke about conflict resolutions and active listening. Finally, we all got a chance to push our limits and face our fears on the climbing wall. Laulima means many hands working together. And during this retreat or this activity, we all had to help out each other in a way to accomplish all of our goals, especially on the Will Watcher and the Wild Woozy, which those were really a woozy. The National Tropical Botanical Garden was a beautiful place to have our November meeting. NTBG Executive Director Chipper Wick Wickman shared the journey he took as a local boy who used this environmental interest, values, and culture and made a career path to assist our island. Dr. David Burney led us on a tour of the sophisticated conservation process endangered plants undergo in the order to survive. We got to see some plants that represented the only remaining species today. As we toured Allerton Garden, we saw the location used for Jurassic Park. That was cool. <laughs> we also visited M Queen Emma's summer getaway in the valley. On the beach side, we took part in a restoration project planting, planting native species such as akia. Vahi is a term that is synonymous with stewardship. On our visit to the National Tropical Botanical Garden, we learned the value of preservation and conversation through our planting project and understanding our fragile ecosystem. Our group decided on conducting a painting project for the Chapala State Park. Our idea was to deter vandalism at the state park by creating murals that would be appealing to the staters and the community. We enlisted community artists Megan O'Connell and Kaylin Spears to help us with the artwork. Thanks to local sponsors such as Home Depot and Walmart, we were able to get most of our supplies for the project donated. 
December's meeting was scheduled right here at Smith's Tropical Paradise. We heard from General Manager, Manager Kamika Smith of his Ohana's Roots in Wailua, Auntie Puna, Tala Sula, and Mele to Alu Like Mai in reference to the relation between our community as an, as an Ohana and the intergenerational connections of our people. Kimo Chun from the Native Hawaiian Center and Technical Education Program taught us the history of the Va as it was used in ancient Hawaii and the values of Lokahi and Kuleana displayed through the practice of paddling. Kumu Sabra Kauka explained the significance of Wahipana or historical sites in Wailua. We visited Hikina Akala, Akala and discussed the importance of recognizing and persevering our past history. We got to practice our paddling techniques in the afternoon and Amo was once again on the Wailua River. Lokahi means unity. Unity is valuable in our community because everyone's voice is important. It is a good leader's job to help bring all of you together and provide a way for us to unite. We learned how paddling canoe requires an understanding of Lokahi. Have you heard about Gaylord's new Sunday buffet brunch? All you can eat for only $22.95. Featuring fresh island fruit, house-baked goodies, Chef Bandy's French toast, sweet potato Kahlua pork hash, ahi egg benedict, or eggs made to order, just the way you like it. Of course, bacon, Portuguese sausage, and potatoes too. Reservations highly recommended. Gaylord's is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Why wait for that special occasion to enjoy Gaylord's? Call 245-9593 and make plans to experience Gaylord's at Kilohana. It's special every day. It's open house every day at the Waipole Beach Resort and Spa. Luxurious and spacious state-of-the-art units are available for purchase, long-term rentals, or even a weekend getaway. Come enjoy our therapeutic saltwater swimming pool, a casual meal featuring our brand new menu, or an ice cold beverage oceanfront at the Tahitian Lanai. Pamper yourself at the internationally acclaimed Aveda Spa. Gift certificates are now available for that special someone or a holiday treat. Welcome to the White Poly Beach Resort and Spa. Be here now. Welcome back, Hawaii. Very shortly, we'll get to meet Hall of Famer baseball legend, Mr. Tommy Lasota. But first, much of his visit was put together with the help of our very dear friends at Leadership Kauai. Here's our executive director, Mr. Mason Chalk. Well, Leadership Kauai was blessed with the opportunity really today to come and, and uh, support youth baseball on Kauai. The leaders of our, of our uh, baseball leagues here on Kauai were, were able to secure Tommy Lasota. And we at Leadership Kauai have always been supportive of community events where we can uh, help collaborate and uh, build awareness of the needs of our, of our island. Uh, we've always taken uh, the opportunity whenever a, a good speaker comes to visit Kauai to uh, have them engage with the community. Uh, you've seen it with uh, our Kauai speaker series in the past. And so when we were approached uh, by our baseball leaders to participate, we took advantage of it. And uh, really, you know, this, this event for us is, is just a partnership where our youth in baseball are gonna be able to benefit from and so we're real happy to be there as a fiscal sponsor for this event. Now, but this this uh, really didn't have to do anything with your, the speaker series of the times of the past, Sonia Manzano, Dinesh D'Souza, et cetera. That's correct. We had, uh, this came about through uh, uh, the, the help of Ron Kochi and, and, and other leaders, like I said, uh, from our baseball community. And, uh, uh, you know, with that, we, you know, it fit right in line with what Leadership Kauai has done in the past. And so, um, uh, Ron approached me to help out with this, and, and again, um, for, for me uh, specifically, uh, the, the chance to help foster our youth, uh, you know, youth sports on Kauai has served as, as a great source of, of building resiliency in our, in our children, and so obviously it's a good fit for us in, in supporting uh, Kauai's needs. You know, we've been following a lot of the graduating classes of Leadership Kauai, and you have uh, taken that to a level in which case you've gotten uh, teenagers involved. Tell us about the, the process of what's going on right now as far as your teen classes are concerned and the continuation of these programs. Great. I uh, thought you would never ask, Dickie. Uh, what we're doing is really modeling what our adult program does, which uh, encompasses building or bringing together people from all sectors of our community, representing, uh, you know, could be nonprofit or a for-profit company uh, from our Department of Education. But well, we've translated this for our youth program, and we include people from, or, or students, juniors in high schools, from every single school on the island. And we bring them together for one year of training. Uh, again, we, we model directly what, with what the adults do, building on skill level for uh, Leadership Kauai. Uh, they're uh, in introducing them to inspirational speakers from abroad. 
and <clears throat> really giving them a sense of what makes, you know, what is the culture of Kauai, what is the lifestyle that we're trying to preserve here. And so, uh, you know, I think that it, it, it's, a, it's a program that is, is in need and that uh, our, our, our youth can definitely grasp and, and um, we can look to it, towards them to fill our boards and commissions in, a, in the future. You know, and um, what's very interesting, I guess, is a lot of times when the election year comes around or politically for one reason or another, others will seek different offices. Some may retire, some may just phase themselves out. But Leadership Kauai is so important because we are really talking about the leaders of the future for this island of Kauai, which is unlike any other county anywhere statewide. That's right. Uh, you know, I reiterate what I had said earlier. There's no really other, other program that I've seen where we try and get representation of all areas of our community. We want to bring people together with different perspectives, different ways of thinking. Um, you know, whether or not you've been here for five years or you've been here for generations, if you're invested in Kauai, if you're committed to staying here and addressing the needs here, then we want you to, to serve on Leadership Kauai. Basically, our outcome here, what we're looking for as our uh, graduates uh, complete the project or the program, is that they'll be fully committed to uh, serving all of our needs here on Kauai. And so they dive right into community issues uh, halfway through our program. They, and they engage with uh, community projects. For instance, the youth are putting together uh, Operation Polehale, uh, which is going to start next month. And it's in collaboration with the adult program. And they're really, we're working with the state uh, parks, Wayne Souza, to get water going out there, to get the road back in shape, to uh, paint and, and uh, the uh, restrooms and create borders. And, and so that this is a, a place that our community can feel proud of and they can invest in it and, and feel some sorts of sort of ownership for uh, Polihale because it's a beautiful place. Yeah, and Mason, do us a favor. Uh, you got a brand new staff that you're working with to help uh, fulfill the needs of uh, not only the office, but certainly to reach out into the community for the leaders of the future. Why don't you uh, introduce uh, your staff to us at this time and uh, share a message of aloha to the view audience. Oh, good. Thank you. I'd like to introduce you folks to uh, our new director of operations, Lynn Lewis. Lynn, say hi. And also Alana Brun. Uh, Kauai girl, she's serving as our marketing coordinator, and uh, we're, this is the team right here. We're, we're gonna, uh, we just gather these people so that we can really address all the challenges that we're facing right now. You know, Leadership Kauai has uh, been in operation for th three years. We've grown really quickly, and so we need to make sure that uh, we're maintaining uh, not only uh, our programs, but as we start to grow, we can answer the needs again of our island. You mentioned a little bit about Alana Brun, uh, Kauai girl. Lynn Lewis, come over here, please. Tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, and what's your role with Leadership Kauai. I'm from Reno, Nevada, originally. Moved here to Kauai five years ago. And my role at Leadership Kauai will be the Director of Operations. I'll be managing and overseeing all the operations at Leadership Kauai, as well as the development and upcoming exciting things we have coming this year. There's a couple of things that we're working on now that um, is new, brand new projects that we want to uh, expand in the community to offer our alumni a network and, and uh, group that they can commit to and continue giving back to the community, as well as uh, the training academy for Leadership Kauai, where we're going to offer knowledge and skills to our general public and the current leaders in our community. So there's a lot happening. We're very excited, and there's more to come. Ooh, really, really, really nice proper grammar, huh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, Alana Brun, speaking of proper grammar, Kauai girl, why don't you share your aloha and please tell us what your role is uh, in conjunction with helping out these fine people in your staff. Aloha, my name is Alana Brun. I'm the marketing coordinator for Leadership Kauai. And as the marketing coordinator, my goal is to facilitate the funds needed to run our program. We've got several really great fundraisers coming up. On April 24th, we're going to be doing the Norwegian Cruise Line Pride of America. Anchoring Kauai's Future is the theme of that event. And um, we will be sending out Save the Dates and Packets soon. And if you're interested, you can contact us. It's going to be a really great opportunity, and we're hoping to do that yearly. So the you know, and sorry to interrupt, but Alana, uh, on another note, congratulations to everybody. Come on over here, give everybody the shakas. Give them the shaka. How's it? How's it? How's it? How's it? How's it? But on another note, a lot of people know you within the community, um, you know, as a, a as a cowgirl, a Paniola, a beauty queen, a contestant. So this might be a perfect time to just jump right off the uh, jump right off the uh, rim, and let's uh, do a little plug for Hold On for Hope. I understand you're helping that fundraiser out also. The Hold On for Hope is going to be held at the Kilohana Luau tent, February 9th. Please come out and join us. We look forward to seeing you there. Okay, so we're going to have to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be right back here at Kilohana. So don't go away, because voila, we'll be right back. Bye -bye. 
delightful, delectable, delicious desserts. The Zanta Club of Kauai Foundation invites you to eat dessert first, Friday, February 8th from 5 to 7.30 at the Kauai Veterans Center in Lihue. Tickets are $13 in advance, $15 at the door, and are available island-wide. Proceeds benefit the Zanta Club of Kauai Scholarship Program. What a scrumptious way to support Kauai's youth. For ticket information, call 651-0823. Aloha from the capital! Attention high school juniors, KIUC will sponsor four juniors to represent Kauai at the 2008 Youth Tour in Washington, D.C. in June. To learn how to qualify for this opportunity to explore our nation's capital, learn about electric co-ops, and see your government in action with 1,400 students from across the country, talk to your counselor or call KIUC at 246-4383. Your Touchstone Energy Cooperative, the power of human connections. We all love our garden island. If we all do our part, we can help keep Kauai clean and beautiful. The Kauai Recycling Program accepts aluminum, glass, clean dry cardboard, newspaper, and mixed paper, plastic number one and number two for recycling. Recycling bins are conveniently located island-wide in Hanalei, Kapa'a, Lihue, Poipu, Loai, Ele Ele, Waimea, and Kikaha. Join us in keeping the island home clean and beautiful from Maka to Makai, Malamai Kaina. The Kauai Recycling Program is a project of the County of Kauai, operated by Garinal Disposal. Hey, welcome back, Koi. Let's head back on over to Kilohana. There we had an opportunity to speak to our very dear friend, Mr. Ron Kochi, that helped to coordinate the visit of Hall of Famer, Mr. Tommy Lasorda. Well, everybody plays that six degrees of Kevin Bacon game and how you link things together. A uh, good friend of mine from Oahu, Wes Yonomini, who's a former teammate and roommate of Hanky Bia at University of Hawaii Hilo, uh, Vulcans baseball, has come to Kauai and done several hitting clinics for the youth baseball players here. Uh, he put me in touch with Butch Hughes, who owns a condominium in Poipu and spends the month of January on Kauai. He's a pitching coach for the Rockies minor league organization. Wes and I went out to spring training for the Rockies uh, in March of last year, met Bill Guyvet, the assistant general manager of the Rockies, who started in the Dodgers organization and is like a son to Tommy Lasorda. Butch says, hey, Bill, Ron could use, and Wes could use Coach Lasorda in Hawaii to do some fundraising. Let me make a call, and that's how we wound up getting uh, Coach Tommy Lasorda here. You know, today you had uh, Coach Lasorda uh, speaking to the Kauai County Council. I think for many of the council members and those that were seated in the council chambers, you know, with, with the everyday life about what goes on as a council member, you know, and the issues here on the island of Kauai, probably a fresh spark of uh, laughter being that uh, you were, quite frankly, entertained, you know, nonstop. Well, uh, you know, he can make you laugh. He's an engaging speaker. Uh, only half the stories were about baseball. He has so many wonderful life experiences and always says how uh, lucky he's been and how thankful he's been to have had uh, the kind of life that he's lived. And uh, he went nonstop for 30 minutes, so we didn't put the three-minute rule on Coach Lasorda. You know, when you uh, found out that Coach uh, Tommy Lasorda, Hall of Famer, was coming to the island of Kauai, as you uh, Googled his history, his past, his uh, knowledge uh, via Joy Kochi. What, what kind of uh, information did you learn that you can convey to the viewing audience uh, as far as uh, his background? Well, I didn't know he's the winningest pitcher in the International League. I think when the coach was playing, there might have been eight teams in the American League, eight teams in the National League. So there weren't many big league spots, and Montreal was the AAA team for the Dodgers. Uh, Having played for Montreal so successfully, I found out he was in the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame and not just uh, in the Baseball Hall of Fame at Cooperstown, class of 97. I found out that he's one of four managers to coach for the same team for 20 years. John McGraw of the old New York Giants, Connie Mack of the Philadelphia Athletics, and uh, Walter Alston, his predecessor on the Dodgers. And it's an amazing thing that the Dodgers had two coaches in uh, 40 years. The other thing that now he's saying will be a great trivia question in years to come, who is the only coach to have coached the World Series champion uh, and also to have coached a gold medal 
Olympic team. And in 2000, he came out of retirement, took the uh, United States to the gold medal in Australia, and defeated heavily favored Cuba four to nothing with a lineup primarily of minor league ball players. Well, that's very interesting that you say minor league ball players because outside of all the credentials that he has, I believe he might be the only player, pitcher, coach, Hall of Famer. But we have to go back into the old days of the Pacific Coast League in the Spokane Indians era when they used to play at the Termite Palace against the Hawaii Islanders. Yeah, and I talked to a friend of mine and told him about the coach being here and he said he has an autographed baseball that says Stu Harrison, a former Dodger from Tommy Lasorda, future Dodger manager. So he knew where he wanted to go and certainly uh, followed his life plan and has been very successful. And interestingly for many of the Kauai residents in the state of Hawaii, I guess because of that relationship and his persona, uh, consequently there's a lot of Dodger Blue fans, um, not fair weather fans, but diehard Los Angeles Dodger fans. Well, for the baby boomers like myself, without live TV like today, all you could get is Giant and Dodger games, and the Dodgers are very successful. So there are a lot of uh, big Dodger fans here, and they've been coming out of the woodwork to see him. The other thing I need to tell the people of Kauai is he normally charges $40,000 for an appearance to speak as a motivational speaker for corporate events. Cost us the round trip ticket and his hotel room and meals. And uh, he said to help the kids on Kauai, uh, we've had kids from Kapa'a High School, Waimea High School, and Kauai High School selling tickets on behalf of Leadership Kauai. Uh, Leadership Kauai is going to make donations to each of the high schools, and I believe uh, the boys are going to be able to have paid off their preseason tournaments that are upcoming for them in the not-too-distant future. Now, you know, Ron, we'd like to take this opportunity sincerely for all yourself, uh, you know, Butch, Marianne, uh, Bill, I mean, everybody that made this event happen because uh, those that uh, has been able to have the pleasure of uh, listening to Tommy Lasorda, you know, certainly in one way or another, I'm sure got motivated. But, you know, on a personal note, I really want to thank you, not only as a husband, as a parent, but certainly a supporter of athletics. And because of uh, the contacts and the, you know, the know-how to make things happen, a lot of times people think stuff just goes poof, happens by magic, but there's a lot of really, really uh, big time coordination. And I want to personally thank you for your hard work and efforts to make this happen because uh, for somebody like Tommy Lasorda to come to the island of Kauai, which I believe perhaps for the first time, very, very huge because uh, it'll be not only lasting memories for the Kauaians, but certainly for Hall of Famer Tommy Lasorda. Well, I appreciate that, Dickie, but you know, I couldn't have done it without uh, Mason Chalk's help with Leadership Kauai as a co-sponsor of the event. So we had a nonprofit organization to encourage business donations. Uh, Grove Farm Company bought Coach Lasorda's ticket here. Uh, Starwood, he stayed at Poipu. Uh, Kukuyula Development helped with accommodations. Uh, you know, A and B besides monetary donations, coffee. Sean Smith and Falco Partners is always there to help step up and keep kids going in the right direction and keep them off of drugs. Uh, you know, Princeville Corporation, Kevin Shaw, and on and on and on. We had at least 20 financial sponsors that uh, really help offset all the expenses so the kids could keep as much money as possible. And I'm really grateful for all of their help to make it possible for these kids. Planning that long-awaited trip to the neighbor island of your choice? Perhaps a world-class shopping spree throughout our country's major cities. I know, a cruise ship dream vacation of a lifetime? Well, call the experienced and dedicated staff of travel experts at Mokihana Travel. Umi Street, Lihui, 245-5338. Aloha, I'm Will Squires. Come fly with us. Will Squires gives a fresh perspective on the splendor of Kauai. Treat yourself to a ride in our air-conditioned Rolls-Royce powered helicopters. Enjoy the views of a lifetime through our spacious custom-built touring windows. Relax in comfort as our pilots inspire you with the tales and legends of ancient Kauai. There's nothing like the breathtaking beauty of Kauai from the air, and no one does it like Will Squires Helicopter Tours. Hilo Hattie is the store of Hawaii. It's like in a candy store, you don't know where to go first. Hilo Hattie is the smart way to get all your Hawaii lifestyle shopping done in one place. Prices were very reasonable. For the largest selections and best values, there's no better place. I think we paid like half 
the price. It's no wonder that Kama Aina have voted Hilo Hattie best place to shop for local fashions for the past four years. Hilo Hattie is located on Kauai, just one mile from Lihue Airport. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, let's hear from Coach, the legendary Baseball Hall of Famer, Mr. Tommy Lasorda. Well, the thing that I try to preach upon youngsters to make sure they get a good education. Education is something that no one can take away from you. Education will open many doors to success. Get a good education and you're going in the right direction. And to the people of this city, continue doing what you're doing because uh, I'm, I was totally impressed. You know, you don't dry, you don't, uh, judge a city by the roads or by the buildings or the highways. You judge it by the people. And these people were so nice, so wonderful, so humble, that I was completely and totally impressed. To me, that shows what kind of city you have here because of the fact of the people. And the people love people. And the people here have made me feel really welcome, and I appreciate that very much. Coach Lasorda, interestingly, you, Lee, you mentioned something about a city, and you mentioned something about the roads. Coaching the Dodgers for upwards of 20 plus years, you know, you mentioned a little bit about coaching the Los Angeles Dodgers, like it was a piece and a cake, but uh, <laughs> driving on the cities of Los Angeles and the freeway was really what the stress was all about. Yeah, well, they said to me, was it the stress of managing the Dodgers that put you in a hospital with that heart problem? I said, hey, I had no problem with stress because I never had stress. But I think the f those freeways are what put me in the hospital. Get on those freeways in California, particularly in Los Angeles, and you'll see what I mean. You know, and for a lot of us old timers, tell us about your fondest memories of the Pacific Coast League, specifically the uh, Honolulu Stadium, the affectionately known as the Termite Palace, between the uh, rivalry between the Spokane Indians and the Hawaii Islanders. One of the things that I remember here so vividly is that when we played Hawaii in the playoffs in 1970, that's the first time they made it a best of seven series because Hawaii was in it and they knew that they would draw some people. So we played two in, in, in Spokane and we win two. Now we come down and they're selling the tickets, three tickets. Game three, four, and five. Well, we knock them off in four straight. I think it was uh, Mikhail Quinn. Quinn was the uh, general manager here, and he was upset because he did not get that fifth game in because it was a sellout. So they had to give the refund all back, and he never spoke to me for years. Now, you at that time had the... Uh, the Steve Garveys of the world. I mean, you had what was referred to back then as probably the greatest all-time minor league baseball team ever. Uh, refresh the viewing audience as to who was on that roster at that time. Well, first of all, that team, a few years back, by Baseball America, called it the greatest minor league team in the history of baseball. And we had... We had on that ball club Steve Garvey, Bobby Valentine, Bill Buckner. Uh, we had Tommy Hutton. Uh, we had uh, uh, Von Joshua. All the guys on that team went to the big leagues. In the eight years that I managed the Dodgers minor league system, eight years, 70 players came through me and went to the big league somewhere. And when I took over manager of the Dodgers, 17 of the 25 guys on that roster had played for me in the minor leagues. So that's, that's what you call a real, real good minor league city. And Hawaii had like the Johnny Warehouse, uh, they had Winston Yanis, Bo Belinsky, and I think uh, eventually even Cleet Boyer, but weren't those Pacific Coast League games like some of the greatest in uh, Columbia Inn, uh, uh, Tosh Kaneshiro, I mean, uh, did you enjoy the Hawaiian foods back then? Oh, oh absolutely. You were talking about one of the great Dodger fans 
in this uh, city and state. And uh, the, he, he, he really supplied all the food for us when we came here because he loved the Dodgers. And he used to come to L.A. when I became the manager. He used to come to L.A. and visit and would come and spend some time with me. You know, you're such a legendary coach. Uh, I heard you talk a little bit about your friend, uh, Vin Scully. And, uh, you know, what do you think is the future going to be for the Dodgers on behalf of all the Dodger fans here? And uh, Joe Torre is going to be at the helm for uh, the, the Dodger Blue. Well, I think getting Joe Torre was a good move by the general manager and the owner. I think that's what we need at this particular time, a man with his credentials. Joe's a good manager. I know I managed against him. And uh, he's had the opportunity to manage, I think, 12 or 13 years for Steinbrenner. So he, he, this guy is a good manager, and we'll, he, we, he'll be well-received in Los Angeles. And uh, we're going we're gonna to see a, a different ball club this year. You know, it is an incredible scenario. Not only are you going to be uh, the featured speaker, as you were the Grand Marshal in, in many, many occasions, but you had an opportunity to address the Kauai County Council. And I think the people of Kauai and the Kauai County Council will really realize that, you know, Tommy Lasota is as sharp as a tack, but what do you contribute your, your humor and your memory and just the fact that you are um, bright well, and, 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 quite frankly, very, very sharp and astute? Well, you t it has to be experience. You know, I've been through it all. I've been through the playoffs and World Series and Little World Series. I've been through it all. And that experience has really helped me because it's helped me to, to think about the teams that I, was, I managed in the big leagues. Even though they didn't win, they were still a Dodger team. And as Dodgers, uh, Dodger fans, you can do no wrong for them. And that's what we have here in uh, this beautiful little island. We have spirit, we've got seeing togetherness, we've got people who are really and truly wonderful. And there's no doubt, and no doubt in, in anyone's mind, but the fans of Kauai, the fans of the state of Hawaii, you know, bleed Dodger blue. I think one of the greatest stories that you've ever attributed to anyone and told the behind the scenes of the story was in 1988 in the World Series when uh, the, that incredible strategy with, between Kurt Gibson and this Dennis Eckerly duel. Uh, <laughs> what a stroke of genius. That was. That was something special. It happened. The fans reacted. And he did the job. He hit the ball out of the ballpark, won the game, but nobody realizes how important that victory was. It paralyzed them for the rest of the series. So we beat them in five games, but we should have beaten them in four. And, and, and unbeknownst to a lot of people, true story, he could barely walk, needless to say, to run. What made you decide to pull him in at that time? And, uh... Well, I knew I couldn't put him in if we got one out because if he hits the ball on the ground, it's a cinch double play. I had to wait and let him hit with two outs. Well, let me tell you what, Coach Lasorda, it is truly an honor for the uh, viewing audience and many baseball fans to have you grace the beautiful Garden Island of Kauai. First off, we'd like to thank you. Secondly, we'd like to uh, truly invite you back. But your general impression of the Garden Island of Kauai and its people? Uh, I love it here. I think it's beautiful. I think a lot more people should come here. I think you talk about paradise. Here it is, right here. Hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about Hall of Famer, Mr. Tommy Lasorda. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll be heading to Garden Island Disposal to tell you about our up and coming phone book recycling program. Don't go away again, because Vala Ao will be right back. Bye. The switch is on, and more listeners on Kauai are discovering 87.7, the new Coast FM. With more music throughout your day, it's a better mix of all your favorites. And Coast FM is the new radio home of Dickie Chang's Vala'au. From Malka to Makai, 87.7, Coast FM. Captain Andy's sailing. Nobody has more fun.
Captain Andy, the ultimate sailing adventure. Wake up Kauai with the Garden Island newspaper. Get the freshest news daily, including in-depth lifestyles and entertainment reports on Fridays, food favorites on Wednesday, business activities on Sunday, the police blotter on Friday and Sunday. Have you seen Monday's photo collage, Kauai Captured, with photos by the happy camper Dennis Fujimoto? We have a motoring section every Friday and daily, spicy, controversial letters to the editor, plus local news, local sports, and Kauai's only TV guide. Subscribe and have it delivered to your home daily. It's your garden island, Kauai made for all Kauai. Take your space from tired to terrific with a little help from Otsukas. It's not always about buying all new things. Sometimes it's about making what you have work well with a few new things. Of course, you could spend a lot of money, but you don't have to if you make the right choices. And that's what our free design services are all about. Make magic in your space. Call today for your free consultation. I am here at Garden Isle Disposal, and with me is with Your Island Pages, Denise Tripoli, and with the County of Kauai Solid Waste Division, Allison Fraley. First off, uh, we are working on a phone recycling program once again. Denise, tell us about this year's venture. Sure. On this year's phone book recycling effort is coordinating with the schools. All schools, um, participating elementary schools, will help recycle phone books. They have the chance to win um, up to $500 for first prize. Um, and also we're donating a tree at Lidgate Park in the name of every participating school. Your Island Pages is donating 17 trees um, because for every one ton of recycled phone books, 17 trees are saved. So we're going to be donating 17 trees and each tree will be in the name of each participating elementary school that's helping us. Okay, so Denise, just to clarify everything right off the bat, you are of course with your island pages. We have the Paradise Pages and we have the Hawaiian Tell. Hawaiian Tell. Please let the, uh, the viewing audience know that all phone books are a part of this recycling yes. event. All phone books are recyclable um, and any phone book that is collected, irregardless of publisher, we're just trying to recycle phone books. We're trying to make an effort um, to be community conscious and to be a responsible corporate citizen here on Kauai. Okay, we, and we are going to be talking a lot about recycling, but with us is the recycling guru uh -huh. of the island of Kauai, <laughs> Allison Fraley. Uh, you are with our Kauai Resource Center. Uh, you are a very, very big part about recycling. First off, when we go to the many of the public garden now disposal bins, tell us about what can be recycled there at the bins. Okay, well we have the Kauai Recycles drop sites. There's eight throughout the island and you, there are several items that are recyclable there. Um, there's corrugated cardboard, um, which is the packaging type cardboard with the corrugation in it. We have a bigger expanded slot for that because we had a problem with that you know accumulating too much in the past so we have that we also have glass in that same big bin any kind of um, beverage container or food container glass and we also have newspaper collected in that bin and then we have companion bins on the side at each site there's one for plastic and aluminum so you can put your number one and your number two plastic as well as your aluminum cans in one of the bins and then there's a separate bin for mixed paper and mixed paper is a huge huge category, which includes colored paper, junk mail, window envelopes, even food boxes like cereal boxes and beer boxes, as well as phone books are collected in those bins. But you know, for this drive, we are encouraging the public to go to the schools and provide that incentive for the schools to participate in that program. But year round, we do collect phone books at the Quiet Recycle Drop bins. You know, and interestingly, Denise, the uh, phone book recycling program very soon Many of Kauai residents will receive one, two, maybe three different phone book publications. But that's when everything starts to rally because probably upwards to maybe 95% of all the phone book recyclables come in there after the drop of the new books. That is true, Dickie. All three books will be distributed within weeks of each other on Kauai. And within a month of the last book being distributed, 95% of all phone books that are collected are collected during that time. You know, and you know, for the viewing audience, a lot of them remember, uh, we've been covering the phone book recycling for year after year after year after year after year and coming into the back warehouses here of Garden Isle Disposal, we literally sat upon mountains and mountains of phone books. You know, you mentioned a little bit about, uh, you know, saving trees and what have you, but statistically, give us some interesting information regarding 
the fact that we are now recycling these books. Kauai is really making a difference. In the last four years of the program, Kauai has recycled 150,000 pounds of phone books over a four-year period, and that represents 1,250 trees that were saved. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's been a very, uh, has made an impact. A lot of people think it doesn't make a difference, but it really does make a difference, and Kauai has stepped up to the plate um, over the last four years that the, um, this program has been running. You know, and interestingly, Allison, you've been with the County of Kauai for many years uh, working with recycling. I guess perhaps in our day, maybe we didn't even know of the word recycling, but of course many of the children and their very concerned parents know about recycling. How have you seen the changes, not only with the numbers, but with the attitude of most people as far as recycling is concerned? Well, we haven't done any surveys, but I, generally there's a lot of more public awareness. We get more calls and, like you said, the stats. I mean, the numbers. When I first started with the county, the average monthly uh, quantities coming into those Kauai Recycles bins was 80 tons a month. Last month we hit a high of 130 tons. So we're talking about a huge difference in participation. Also, that doesn't even count the bottle deposit program, which is a new law that came into effect about four years ago where we are you know having a 70 percent statewide participation rate in uh, redeeming those containers so a lot more participation and I would imagine that 70 percent for Hawaii standards is huge considering that a lot of other states perhaps offer a dime instead of a nickel right there's a couple states that offer higher redemption rates but yes I mean for the five cent um, redemption, that's a huge number, that's a huge percentage. And I tell you what's so, so, so very beautiful is when uh, we have our uh, company picnics, we have our baby luau's, we have our, you know, our outdoor festivities that we love to do here on this island of Kauai. It's so nice to know that people are there at the Opala crew, not only picking up rubbish, but certainly separating and recycling throughout our many beach parks and throughout many, you know, public or private parties throughout this island of Kauai. And what we're doing, we get state funding to facilitate that program. I don't know if you noticed a couple years ago, we put out these hoop wire bins and a lot of them, you know, disappeared from the parks. We're um, going to be improving that program by putting out different bins based on what we heard from people that were servicing the bins. And we're going to be securing them into the parks, putting a lot more out there, making them more available so that people, you know, have a choice when they're at the park. I don't want to put it in the trash can, here I have the spin. So that's coming online soon. And it's so nice to see Kauai residents, the people, the children, the parents, taking that extra incentive and working just a little bit harder to provide recycling. If you just joined us, we are here at the Garden Isle Disposal. With us is our, uh, with our county uh, solid waste program, Allison Fraley. And of course, we are here specifically, Denise Tripoli, once again, to let everybody know about the phone book recycling. It is presently happening right now. Various school children, various parents will be trying to get books, so we want everybody to hold on to their books. Right. Don't throw the books because somewhere or another... Someone's going to come take it from you, yes. Um, hold on to your books, don't throw them away. You'll probably have a school child come to your house. Um, you'll probably be asked at work. You'll be probably asked in a variety of places for your phone books. Um, I believe the schools are going to be very competitive in the contest. A lot of them are thinking about partnering up with local businesses. Um, I've heard a lot of creative ideas from the different schools. So I think it'll be a pretty fun competition to watch. And the winning school wins $500. Um, the second place is $300. Third place is $200. We're going to be tracking each week how the different schools are doing in the education page of the Garden Island newspaper um, and the contest lasts through March 1st. And I do want to just take this opportunity, unlike the years of the past, we've always tried to modify and make things not only fun, make it competitive, but also to make it fair. So it doesn't matter how big your school is, the size of your school, the student body of the school, because the layout is pretty much fair across the board that, you know, you don't have to be the biggest school on the island, certainly to, to win any sort of prize. We listen to the feedback, like Allison, we listen to the feedback from the community, and a lot of people had that problem with it. So we've adjusted that the number of student body, K through five, um, divided by the number of um, books that they collect so every school can win. What's really interesting, Dickie, the smallest school has 53 students, the largest school over 900 K through 5. So there's quite a discrepancy. The smaller schools can really pull it out here. It'll be really amazing to see. Well, you know, one thing I would like to say is that when we had this uh, educational seminar to launch off the uh, book recycling campaign, your company came out with a very, very interesting fact-finding uh, addition in which case not only can we learn and read, but there's also recycling tips, recycling points, and everything else. Is that publication or that pamphlet available for the general public if sure. they want to take a look at it? If and anybody if would like that, they can go ahead and call me. Um, my number is 651 
um, 6153, and I can go ahead and get a packet sent out to them, or to any business that wants to be aware of those statistics or anything. It's really quite fascinating. Besides the 17 trees that are saved for one ton of recycled phone books, it also saves 24,000 gallons of water, 3,700 pounds of lumber, 12,000 gallons of oil. It's really phenomenal. Um, and um, it's interesting too, some people ask, what are recycled phone books made of? A phone book can be recycled up to six times, and recycled phone books make egg cartons, animal bedding, um, toilet tissues, um, and there's and then in that packet that you saw today is a whole list of all the different things that are made from recycled phone books. And that packet again was 6516153? Is my phone number, yes, and I can get that packet out to you. Beautiful. Okay, any other last words of wisdom and advice? Um, well, um, for more recycling information, people can go to our county website. We have a, a lot of information on the website. It's kawaii.gov, and you click the link environment, and then click recycling link, and there's pages and pages of information about different recycling streams, where to go, what to do. You know, when, when we find out that you're a solid waste coordinator with the Kauai County, uh -huh. tell us what you feel is the most exciting part of your job and why. Ooh, stumping me now. Well, I mean, it's really exciting to motivate people to make behavior change and to see that material coming out of our landfill and diverting that material. So, I mean, it's a huge challenge. Well, it always keeps me working. Um, we love our new phone book. It's smaller. It's convenient for the car. If you notice, we're the smaller one because we're a mobile society now and people are on their cell phones and they want a small phone book that's in their car because they don't want to call and pay $2 to find a phone number. And that's what we've paid attention to what the people are saying. And we've made our phone book as small, as mobile as possible because we are becoming a smaller mobile society. So when you this use... Is this, week, this is coming in the mail as we speak. Look so beautiful back cover. Kawhi on the back cover, isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, so this is the deal. This is the deal. When you get this book, because we're a mobile society, what we're going to do is we're going to safely pull on the side of the road, well away from the traffic, <laughs> then we're going to open up the book, then we're going to find out the phone number, then we're going to dial, then we're going to make the call, finish the call, then we're going to continue to safely drive, slowly, with our seat belts on, and with respect to our other fellow drivers. We're going to have to take a short break. Don't forget now, save your phone books. And we'll see who the winner is of this year's 2008 phone book recycling program. Don't go away, Valaau. Our good friends will be right back. Live the life you've always dreamed about in a unique retirement and assisted living community, boasting golf course and mountain views, a pool and spa area, and three exquisite meals a day. Conveniently located in the center of Lihue, the Regency at Puakea offers you a lifestyle free from the mundane daily chores of house cleaning, grocery shopping, and cooking meals. Enjoy life to the fullest. Visit the Regency at Puakea today. Aloha. My name is Adam Ort, General Manager at the Regency at Puakea. I would like to invite all of you to come and visit our wonderful community and see all that it has to offer. Our professionally trained and caring staff allow you to leave all those daily chores behind and really enjoy life to its fullest. E como mai. Feel the beauty of this sign Down from the beaches to the highest mountain Different people living as one In harmony under the sun on the island middle of the sea the Pulkea Golf Course Call for your tea times today Delightful, delectable, delicious desserts The Zanta Club of Kauai Foundation invites you to eat dessert first Friday, February 8th from 5 to 7.30 at the Kauai Veterans Center in Lihue Tickets are $13 in advance $15 at the door and are available island-wide Proceeds benefit the Zanta Club of Kauai Scholarship Program. What a scrumptious way to support Kauai's youth. For ticket information, call 651-0823. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Valao. As always, we'd like to sincerely thank each and every one of you for watching Valao and making us a part of your weekend and week out festivities here on our beautiful Garden Island of Kauai. Mark down your Valao calendars this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Very cool event at the St. Michael's Church. First off, their second annual Jazz Benefit Concert. Now the Jazz Concert will be at 7 o'clock p.m. on Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. on Saturday. Some of the best jazz musicians from Kauai, from Hawaii and throughout the mainland will gather at St. Michael's, that's number one. 
Sunday morning. They also have a jazz festival. So sounds like it's going to be a really, really cool sermon to go to church and listen to some great, great jazz. Further information, second annual jazz festival in support of our dear friends at St. Michael's. Call me at 245-5782, 245-5782. Speaking of marking down your Vala Al calendars, what's going to happen in Glendale, Arizona, you ask? Well, that's the site of Super Bowl number 43. And believe it or not, can the New England Patriots finish the season undefeated at 19 and 0? Standing in their way is winners of nine road games, the New York Giants. At the end, when the gun sounds off, it'll be the New England Patriots, 19, the surprising New York Giants, 20. Super Bowl MVP, Peyton's younger brother, Eli. So what does that mean? If you're listening to me, look for a blowout. New England over the Giants. It is time for us to heli on. As always, let's all please take care of our families, our friends, and neighbors, the Malahini and the Aina. And we'll check you guys out next week. Only go Giants.